This is the second episode of season four. And we hope you enjoy, enjoy it. it. Well, there's the, we ask you a question about Darby Mills, about future parent, future parents coming in future albums. And pets. Well, plus even more stuff. And so, def enjoy definitely never enough to ever. From B sharp music in Regina, Saskatchewan. So, hope you enjoyed what we filmed in Moose Jaw, Corey's hometown, and we just finished at B sharp. Thomas Massey, ladies and gentlemen. So he's he's already. <laughs> He's already gone solo. What is your history with this store, Corey Todd? Uh, history with this store? Uh, well, when we were young, we would come in this store, loiter around until we were asked to leave, <laughs> and uh, just drool over guitars and, and, and look at guitars. Did you actually... Uh... Yeah, I was always here. He was always here. Yeah. Was, they built the store around him. He was standing here and they built the store. <laughs> <laughs> oh, Craig's been here since I've yeah, cause they, here. And... Craig ran this place since 86, am I right on that? Oh, yeah. Wow, so that was, I was born three years later. Just kidding. No, uh, so yeah, as long as I've been playing music uh, in, uh, uh, professionally, that's probably around when we started to do it kind of more professionally. Yep. But uh, yeah, but prior to the, the previous store, we were always around in this building uh, looking at guitars and uh, wanting to play music. So that's, you know, that's the very Canadian, uh, uh, Saskatchewan thing to do, go look at guitars. Please continue to, to support your local music stores. Support well. local yeah. music stores, please. Darby Mills. It's really easy to work with Darby Mills because we were in Los Angeles and she was in Vancouver. <laughs> we talked about this yesterday, but we just pretend shh. Okay. Why, why are you asking about Darby Mills? Okay, tell so we recorded a song called Don't It Make You Feel Like Dance. Don't It Make You Feel is the name of the song, but Don't It Make You Feel Like Dance is the song that you probably know it. It was a big hit in Canada. And so we recorded a version of that song and then Darby, uh, Corey reached out to Darby Sure enough, Darby was like, yeah, I'd love to sing on it. So she sings on a portion of the song, and it's it's pretty exciting for us to have an actual guest on the song. The only other guest on the on the album is here tonight, isn't he? He's here tonight. He? He's here today. He's right there. And that's My dad. That's Corey Churchill's dad, Roman Churchill, back there. Oh, he, he left. Oh, he, oh. he knew that was coming, so he was like, oh, mother. Anyway, he played, he actually played on the same song. He played the he played the guitar solo with Corey on uh, on Don't Make Your Feel. There you go. Yeah, take credit. That's what that's for, that's that show is one hundred and one. Just take credit for everything. That's what I've been doing. Here's answer some more of these questions I wrote. Yeah. See, that's um, how it's done. What is it like to put, have your dad play with one of your shots? Is that a segue or what? I, I segue for him. That's professionalism. Showbiz. What's your what's it like to have? I know that's random, right? Yeah. So what's it like to have your dad play on the record? Are you saying so? No. Or what? what I'm, I, I, that, that was it. I just. Okay. Good. That's good. Try Relax. That was awesome. <laughs> <laughs> so I love it. I love it so much. I was recording the guitar solo for "Don't It Make You Feel at Home" in my studio in LA, and my dad just happened to be there on vacation. And I'm like, hey, you should totally play harmony guitar on this song. It's not an easy harmony to play too. It's really totally. weird. Yeah. And so we went in the studio and knocked it out and half an hour or so and it was really cool so both guests appear on that song darby mills and yeah. Norman Jerko. wow that's i mean cool. my dad taught me almost everything i know about music so it was really cool for him to, to be a guest that's great you only gave me like a couple we're, we're gonna go outside and fight about it later it's gonna be great saskatchewan style <laughs> go ahead robert are there any upcoming are they are there any other pa parents upcoming on any two songs? Oh god, I hope not. <laughs> Gene Kearns is gonna be yelling at me on the next record. <laughs> well, my father plays guitar too, maybe someday I'll get him to play something. That'd be really fun. Um my your are your parents musical? Yeah. Yeah, they are, aren't they? Unless you want to put accordion on uh, <laughs> <laughs> I immediately start thinking, what songs have accordion on them? My sister should play on the record. Your sister could play on the record, yeah, she's very talented. She's the better looking, more talented one in the family. She lives in Bay. You notice how no one argued with you? <laughs> <laughs> I'm the first one to say it. Is there a Canadian classic song Toop Will Not Touch? Canadian classic song that Toop Will Not Touch. Mm. We talked about this yesterday. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> You're not supposed to let them know that, dude. Dude, and we 
shh, quiet. <laughs> Over the microphone. <laughs> this is the show, ladies and gentlemen. This is what you came for. Uh, honestly, I, I don't know. I really don't feel like there's anything we couldn't play. Yeah. Do you have any pets? He has pets, and uh, I currently have his pets. My my wife's watching his pets at my house. Hey, wait. My pets are at your house right now. Your pets are at my house. Our wives. Is it like a, so all our pets are together. I'm charging rent now. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we're we're playing music in Regina, and our wives are having uh, dog uh, parties. Dog party right there. Yeah. <laughs> we just found out before we went on. They're like, hey. Not D A W G either. It's like actual <laughs> dog party. <laughs> so it's. Uh, we love yeah. our pets. Yeah, yeah, he's got three. He's got two. We're Shane, get Shane, and I are both. Sadly, but Shane's my pet. I'm his pet. It's a thing. Probably after today, talk. You will have a pet. Yeah. Oh yeah. God help me. Go to the local store and get a fish. Go get a fish, exactly, exactly. Yeah. Take a fish on the road, wear it like a, in a thing, like Flavor Flav. Walk around with my fish, feed my fish. Was there a question from the audience? Where's that? Is it, is it on the napkin? Yeah, yeah, it's on the napkin. Okay. This could be trouble. Question for you. For me? You owe me 50 bucks from 1985. That's <laughs> not a question. Is there going to be an, an infant's reunion? Infant's reunion? Yeah. God. Uh, when I was a kid, our first band was called The Infants from Lanning and Saskatchewan. And, uh, what did the, the bus say on it? What did the bus say on your bus? What did the bus say on it? Yeah. Yeah. We did have a gigantic... That's when I met Corey. I was in The Infants and he was in his family band called Churko. And uh, what did it say on the bus? It was, was painted like the Partridge family and it said, don't laugh, your daughters might be in here. <laughs> You shouldn't get that. But the funny thing is this: it was it started off. We would get we would get uh, like in trouble all the time. You weren't allowed to actually have a school bus on the road. So they said, it, you know, I can't remember what the law was, but I was saying, okay, fine. So we went back and we painted it a primer gray. And then just as we kind of were going on the road, it would get tagged, like not in like Inglewood, California, but in like you know, Camsack, Saskatchewan, and Kipling, Saskatchewan, and all these places we play. People would spray th spray paint things on it. You guys spray painted "See at the Junos" on the back of the bus. I don't remember that. And I did. I saw you there. And you did. And we saw each other at the Junos. It was a, oh, really? it was a premonition of sorts. But uh, somebody spray painted on the side of the bus. Don't laugh because your dog's trying to get What inspired you to bring back the classics? Bring back the classics. You guys, I think. <laughs> I said before, like generationally and geographically, because we. The fact that people from Japan or South America can enjoy these songs that are largely, not necessarily lost, but it is in reach as far, um, is part of it. And the younger generation being able to hear these songs and enjoy them, that's uh, what it meant to me. Last question, just randomly pulled from the thing. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's part of the fun. Okay, I'll just, I'll just... I can't believe your preparation you skills, because you, you guys should get graded for this. What have you learned with your other bands oh. that have helped with two? Um, that's, that's a good question. Go ahead, answer it. So back in the day, we used to be able to play six nights a week in bars. A lot of you guys probably remember those days. And then on Saturday, you would play like twi twice, because you do a matinee or a jam session. So... Specifically in the country world, you guys had to do jam sessions. Totally, totally. They were called jam sessions on Saturday? In, in Ontario, they were called matinees. Here, they're called yeah. jam sessions. Yeah. yeah. Oh God. And, and so we learned a lot of different songs. We were constantly playing cover tunes and learning our craft of how to emulate guitar tones, how to emulate effects, uh, how to sing in tune, how to sing harmony. So when we actually how to be comfortable playing in front of people. Totally. Part, so yeah. when I got to play with Shania Twain, it was just like another glorified cover gig because now I'm playing her songs, but I have to learn how to play her fiddle parts and, and you know singer parts so all that stuff we did as kids playing in, in the bars and whatnot helped prepare us would you say that is correct well i always sort of point out that the beatles went to hamburg before they got became famous and they played like six nights a week and they played like six hours a night and they played all john barry and little richard and they played all these songs just to entertain people but they became so rock solid as players and rock solid and just really comfortable being on stage because that's most of the game for us is that when a lot of guys were just starting to kind of put bands together, we'd already been on stage for several years, all of us, I think, in this band. So by the time you get on stage, it's like totally normal to play in front of people. It's normal to play on stage. It's not normal to play in the daytime to people in a store. But <laughs> but still, it's kind of like, you know, that that's a big part of the thing is totally. just becoming uh, really good at your instrument. 
Thank you, buddy. Wait, I have one more. Yeah, well, one he's got a question, and then we'll go to the, to the crowd. Where's your security guard? Where's my security guard? Right there. Right there. Not doing his job. Oh, there he is. Right there. Hey, that's Lee. He's our insecurity guard. <laughs> it's different than a security guard, which since you know sort of takes care of. He actually is insecurity guard. He takes care of me and tells me, "You get that jacket looks nice, stuff like that." And I feel really good about myself. Everybody should get one. It's about fifty grand a month. It's really expensive, but it's every worth every penny. Yes, so that's a good question. Those are great questions. The Massey twins, ladies yeah. and gentlemen. That's Thanks, fantastic. Guys. Thank you, Thomas. Can we Sorry. keep those questions? Because I want to. I or do you want to take those questions? Because I want to. Part of their television archive. Uh, I, yeah, you, maybe you should hold on to them. But I, can I take one? Just gonna want to make sure that I, I remember that I had this okay. experience. We hope you enjoyed our conversations with Took. I know. I want to say thank you, Took. They're at Chick Fil A. So yeah, okay. we're trying to yell over there. And well, like, subscribe, buy, buy our merch, follow us on show, follow us on social media, and I hope you didn't join Never Enough Took. Ever, and definitely, never enough. Ever. To well, well, if you didn't watch Never Enough Ever Took ever, wait, watch it. Well, I'm sorry. I just have to say the this. first part. Thank you, Took. Thank you. Yeah.